Oh, is the former coach at Aston Villa. What's up, people on YouTube? We're giving a little preview there. Uh, episode 51 of the Bros Talking Soccer Podcast. I'm Dave, here as always with my brothers Christian and Matt. Christian, say hello. Hello. Matt, say hello. Hello. All right, there we have it. I got on my fan football shirt, and I am rocking Same. the Har- Oh, whoa, small world. Oh, I, I am rocking the black a- one. Harrisburg City <laughs> Islanders scarf because I woke up this morning to the news that they are rebranding as Penn Football Club, which I absolutely hate. I hate it when American teams use FC, uh, but uh, you know, so this is you know I'm not going to get to wear this too too often, so I figured I'd rep it for uh, well I can, you know, you know guys, do you know they're going to be Penn FC? Yeah. I mean, I get it. They're trying to appeal to a broader fan base than just Harrisburg. Uh, the pen isn't what bothers me. It's the it's the FC that bothers me. Also, in their logo, they have FC at the top, and then they say Penn Football Club. So they're a football club, Penn, oh, FC. Oh, nice. That's yeah. fun. So they're football club, Penn, football club. A lot of FCs going on there. So YouTube, this is a little bonus content for you because our podcast listeners will not will not see it. Guys, are you uh, – or hear it, I should say. You guys ready to jump into the podcast? Yeah. Cool. Matt? Yeah. Great. Oh, wait, before we start. Okay. Uh, how? Sorry, this, never mind. We'll talk about it after. Just forget it. Just keep going. Go. No, no. What's up? What's up? Nah, you, it, you... There's nothing to do with soccer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 51 of the Bros Talking Soccer Podcast. As always, I am Dave Knittel. Said my last name right this week. Here with my brothers Christian and Matt to discuss stories from around the soccer world. Christian, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Uh, it's always a good day when you pronounce our name right, so it's a good start. And I'm down here in Raleigh filming from a different room for once. Yeah. It's my third – actually, no, it's probably like my fifth or sixth room that I've recorded in over the years. Wow. A year's year, I guess. It's been almost a year, guys. Yeah, get, excited. get excited. Next week's our one year. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing, David? I'm doing well. Still very sweaty from my morning workout. We're recording at a different time than usual, so I'm, I'm trying to power through that. But other than that, that's good. Christian, please do not drink or <laughs> every week. Every week, it's something. Just mute if you're going to do that. Matt, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Dave. Uh, thanks for asking. About to be Thanksgiving break, so I have no more work to do for a week and a half. So. Woo! Yeah, party <laughs> on. All right, good work. Exciting times. Christian, do you have a trivia question for us this week? Uh, I do not. Yeah, I didn't either, and uh, yeah, I should have realized that. And uh, Wait, actually, I think uh, – shoot, hold on. I think I might. Okay. It's all right. So, YouTubers, bear with us. Podcast, podcast listeners, this will be cut, so – um, yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> doing this um, so the Sixers are looking good. That was what I was going to talk about. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah, podcast or anyone watching on YouTube, we're going to have a slightly different format um, on this one. Uh, we're only going to do two segments and I'll, uh, you know. I don't even know why I'm saying this because uh, I'm going to repeat it when we're when we're recording and live again. So, yeah. Matt, ch- go check out the uh, Enter the Bumpy Pitch Tournament on Fan Futsal if you want to win a gift card. Um, if you got okay, any friends. I didn't know like, if it was morally right for me to do it. Honestly, I just need it filled up. <laughs> um, okay. I, have, I have a couple ads going live today for uh, on a, a pretty – popular soccer show soccer podcast total soccer show they're gonna do a fan futsal ad today so i'm excited about that and then um fpl secrets that twitter account um is going to be posting so i'm hoping that i can get it filled up by uh by this weekend but right now i'm only at five so definitely need some more christian how's the progress going on the trivia question um it's good i'm just trying to think of what's the best way to phrase it. Okay. I have to look up this guy. Hold on. <laughs> this guy? Just look out the this window. This guy. Blue. Ha, ha. Everybody's so funny. We got yokes here. We got yokes. Oh, this is just great content. You know, guys? It's just fantastic. 
Ah, no, not him. Who is this? Oh, Go away. <laughs> Apologize, uh, anyone actually watching this on YouTube. I know we have zero uh, viewers live, but uh, in case anybody's watching this in the future, just I'm sorry. Beard's coming in nice, though. Right. Happy about that. I uh, found ways to... Okay, I found ways to uh, make money, and uh, Christian started talking, so I stopped. But um, Audrey sent me. I just have to take like a cotton swab and swab my mouth and just send them my saliva. I get fifty <laughs> bucks each time. <laughs> uh, I love college. Oh wow! Man. Okay. What, where, who are you sending okay, your DNA it. to? Um, let me see. It is. <laughs> DNA sample dot org. Speeding up science with you. Why are you sending them DNA? Fifty dollars for some spit. Yeah, I know. I'll what spit are they, on somebody for fifty dollars. What are they doing with your DNA? Stuff. I don't know. I'm probably making a bunch of me's. They're making clones. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I heard. All right, Christian. Do you have our trivia question? We're gonna have some good outtakes. I do. This one. I do. All right. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do the uh, <coughs> intro again to Christian. Do you have a trivia question okay. for us this week? Okay, Christian, uh, do you have a? <laughs> What's <right> up? <laughs> All right, <laughs> Christian, do you have a trivia question for us this week? Of course I do, Dave. I'm always prepared. So this week the question is: Can you guys name the three top goal scorers goals to game ratio? Well, the actual scores, not the actual ratio. <laughs> Can you name the three highest scores based on goals to game ratio of 2017? In oh, the okay. world or Premier League? In the, the world. League? In the okay. world. Okay. I know one, I think. Yeah, I think I know one too. Okay, that's good. That's a good one. We will. Uh, is there a minimum number of games, I assume? Ah, whatever. We'll figure uh, it out. The minimum number of games on here is 41. Okay. All right. That's helpful. Thank you. Okay, so with that, we're going to get into our content here. wanted to give a quick heads up. We're going to do a slightly different format this week. You're going to hear from us in segments one and three. And then in our second segment, we actually have an interview with Kevin and Martin from the Loud Americans Discussing Soccer podcast. I sat with them, interviewed them. They're a ton of fun. Uh, it's So we curse on this podcast a little bit. They curse a little bit more. So just giving you the heads up there. That uh, interview is still awesome and hilarious, but just preparing you for, for that. Are they hiring? <laughs> before we get into our, our topics here i wanted to give a quick plug for fan futsal so i'm the founder of fan futsal and uh we are simplifying fantasy soccer to make it <laughs> ay, ay, ay. We are simplifying fantasy soccer to make it easier for all soccer fans to play. And so this week we actually have a tournament and we're partnering with Bumpy Pitch, so an awesome soccer clothing company. And the winner of that tournament, which I think will finish in mid-December, you only have to beat out 16 or 15 other users. The winner of that tournament will get a $20 gift card to Bumpy Pitch. So definitely go check that out. Again, we're simplifying fantasy soccer. It's super simple to play fan futsal you only select five clubs only need to follow match scores but we still have strategic elements like formations and positions and all of that so definitely go join check it out and you could win twenty dollars let's get into our segments now first segment here talking mls coaching hires and brad F friedel was recently appointed manager of the new england revolution christian what do you think about the revolution appointing friedel given his background given his lack of first team coaching experience what do, what do you think about that hire are we uh, talking about brad friedel or friedel friedel i know okay. I, I could say our last name but I uh brad friedel i have always uh always been a fan of him in general i don't know how i feel about his fake ass accent that he does but uh I, I like him as a person and i think he knows the game he's got a lot of experience playing in europe and i think he'll bring a lot of like confidence and a bunch of new ideas to Eng new england but um i just don't know if it's right for him to just jump right into a coaching role when he's not had an assistant coaching role or kind of shadowed anyone before and he has been the head coach of the U19s for the U.S. for a year or two, but still, it's it's 
different. That's a whole di- international is a completely different animal than it is at the club level. And youth uh, is different as well. Yeah, Matt, what true. do you what do you think about this hire? Yeah, I think it's good for everyone. I think Friedel knows a lot about the game. He knows a lot about the whole soccer world. Uh, fans don't have to hear him uh, as an analyst too much anymore with his half American, half uh, British accent, which turns out to be <laughs> Irish. Um, so, so that's good. But uh, yeah, I think it's a benefit for the for the. Uh, MLS, and I think it's a good challenge for Friedel. Yeah, I'm going to miss that confusing accent. Uh, I, th- I think it's an interesting sort of risk that that the New England Revolution are taking. He doesn't have the first team experience, but he has tons of connections. He's played on boatloads of clubs in England and played under a ton of really high-level managers. I know Pochettino had t- spoken to him because uh, he had signed Cody Cropper, who is an American who's now actually on the New England Revolution, comes full circle there. But, you know, Friedel's got connections all over kind of the soccer world, and so I do like that aspect of hiring him. But I think it is a risk given he doesn't have first-team manager uh, experience or even assistant manager experience. So I kind of agree with you guys. Keeping things moving along to Montreal, who also hired a new manager, Remy Gard, who was the former Aston Villa manager and was heavily involved with Lyon, uh, I think as an assistant when they rose to prominence in league uh, in the mid 2000s, I don't think he was head manager, but he's a fairly decorated manager as well. Matt, what do you think about Montreal making this sort of international hire? I like it. I think it's good that you're getting kind of bigger names into the MLS um, names, you know, uh, I know like the union, like Jim Curtin, you know, he might not be known all around the world, uh, but the MLS, I'm not saying he's a bad coach or anything, but, you know, it's good that the MLS is getting, you know, bigger names to probably draw more attention and more fans to the league. Yeah, it's joining basically world soccer and the the global economy. So I I, I like it as well. Christian, what what was your take on Remy Gard? Uh, I think it's a good signing. He was coaching in Lyon for a bunch of years. I think you you mentioned that, and I think I saw that when I was looking him up a little bit. Uh, he's going to a French speaking area as well, and I think that's only going to help them in Canada and he's bringing a lot of experience, something that I don't think Montreal's had for a long time. If ever, uh, he is a quality manager. He did not do well at Aston Villa, but the premier league is also a different animal. And he went into a tough situation where all his players kind of wanted to leave. (laughs) And when Ben Teke and Delph kind of just swooped out, Oh, actually that may have been after him, but still they weren't playing at the highest level. And Things kind of spiraled downhill under him. I think this is a great chance for him to rise back up. And MLS is is tough, but it's probably an easier transition for him, especially going into Canada. Yeah, and so the only and this was just a rumor, but the basically the other big name mentioned with that job was Alessandro Nesta. So comparing the two, I don't know if you, Matt, have you heard that, or or do you have a preference between the two? Uh, do you have any thoughts there? That's where Nesta played when he came over, right? Yeah, he played there for a year. Yeah, just one year. Okay. And then he's been managing okay, um, Miami FC in the NASL. Yeah, I mean, if he's still in America, he's still getting to know like how we play soccer. I feel like Nesta could have been a great signing. He's a household name. Everybody in the soccer world pretty much knows Nesta. So I feel like that would have been a good signing too. Okay. Christian, any, any other thoughts to add You know, comparing the two? I think he would have been a good signing, but I think that they went with the safe bet with someone a little more experienced. Agreed. Agreed. So speaking of MLS kind of joining the world economy of soccer, MLS is now considering changing their transfer allocation rules. So for those that don't know, MLS is a bit complicated, uh, especially with dealing with player movement and transfers and everything like that. Currently, if a player is transferred out of MLS, a team can keep a maximum of three quarters of that transfer fee. And, uh, and that's only if it's a homegrown player. If it's not a homegrown player, that fee is 50-50 between that club and the league, the rest of the league. And also, I think there's only about, it's less than $700,000 in allocation money can be applied to a first-team roster, no matter how much a transfer is. So basically, there's no incentive for MLS to transfer a player for under something like $5 million because a club only gets, you know, at most, oh man, math time. 
like three and a half million or four million. I can't do math. Um, and of that, they can only use basically 700,000 to the first team roster. They're considering changing those rules to sort of incentivize MLS to start selling players onto bigger leagues and things like that. Christian, what do you think about MLS considering these, these rule changes to the transfer process? I think it's huge. And I think it has to happen. I think right now it's the incentive is not to sell, to keep hold players, even if they don't want to be there. And even if they're trying to further their careers and like they want to go to a European team somewhere where they're going to make it a little bit, maybe more of a name on the world stage right now we're not incentivized to sell them you're not getting enough money in and although at the homegrown level you're making a little bit more money than you would be with just any other player right now the homegrown isn't even enough i think you should be getting 100 percent, and i think that's what they're talking about you're going to get 100 percent of developing players so that's going to help incentivize growth through academies but i still think that what i what i was reading uh they're going to start to incentivize selling by increasing the allocation money every year. They're going to slowly, incrementally increase it. And I think that is a huge bonus. I think they need to do that. It can't all just be at once. I think slowly implementing this process is going to be key. Yeah, that's a good point. That is definitely a good point. Matt, thoughts on this whole consideration of change, changing the allocation transfers? Yeah, so right now I actually think it's not a bad uh you know, system to keep players in this country. So for that reason, I actually don't think it's like too bad. But you know, for growth reasons and you know, changing players, changing your team, like cha the game's always evolving. So I think that's kind of be stunted with this, you know, with the old way of transfers. Um, so I think it's only good to kind of encourage selling, encourage growth with teams. So I'm I'm a fan of this. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's a sign that MLS is sort of growing. And I think those original rules were required in order to sustain the league and keep some of the better players here. But now that the league is growing, it's becoming, you know, it has a greater profile on the international stage and it needs to start selling players to keep increasing that profile. So I'm a big fan of all of this. Guys, yeah, I was, yeah, I was reading into the Yedlin example it was giving us in the article I just think it's absurd that you, they sell him for, what, like $4.9 million, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And really, they only can use how much of it for general allocation money? Like 700000 Yeah, yeah. 700. I think it's less than that. And that is really not fair to do because a player of his talent, you're not going to be able to replace easily. And you're really losing value in pl selling players for that price. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. So, yeah. I agree. So with that, that is the end of our first segment here. You're going to hear our interview with the the lads, Kevin and Martin from the Lads Podcast. They're really funny guys, and uh, I was really excited to, to interview them. So get excited, because I was excited. And uh, you're going to hear some music. You're going to hear me talk with them. And then after that, you're going to hear us again. So stick with us. Talk to you soon. All right. Good job, guys. I thought that was good. Yeah. Kept it moving. It's pretty good. Yay, yay. And... Uh, yeah, and we got a good, good. We're gonna have some good uh, outtakes too from that whole DNA uh, <laughs> discussion. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, do you guys listen to the podcast, by the way, or no? Yeah, I do I, when I can. Yeah, I started putting so no. <laughs> so no. <laughs> I, started, <laughs> I started putting outtakes at the end, and uh, I don't know. I think they're really funny. Do you guys listen to them? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna welcome back and say, hope you enjoyed that interview. Um, so just roll with it. Okay, guys. Okay. Welcome back, listeners. Hope you enjoyed that interview with the lads. Again, really funny guys. Hope you go check them out. Getting back to our topics for this week, this is something we missed discussing last week, and I don't know how we missed this, but <laughs> Patrice Evra kicked one of his own fans in the face before a Europa League match. He plays, well, he I should say he played for Marseille. Uh, Matt. Did you see the video? What was your take on this whole situation? Yeah, so I was expecting a little bit better of a kick, <laughs> to be honest. For him to be in this much trouble, I was expecting like some solid contact and a knockout. So I was a little, a little disappointed by that, but yeah, it's still unacceptable. Um, can't be going around kicking fans. I don't know what, the, what started that skirmish with the fans down there with all the players. I only saw like the video of ever kicking out what started that or what provoked him but yeah, you can't go around kicking fans 
Yeah, I so I am I'm not sure either. I know the Marseille fans are pretty notorious for being pretty hard and uh, pretty tough on their players. So I mean, I assume the fan. I don't know if I should say had it coming, but I'm sure he said some stuff that sort of encouraged that. Christian, what was your take on this whole situation? What the hell are they doing at Manchester United that encourages their players to attack fans? Because Eric Cantona did this, and now Patrice Evra did it. Yeah, he's not at United anymore, but what the hell is going on over there? Uh, How do you kick a fan? I mean, I saw how you do it, but what is going through your head that you think, this is the time, this this is the moment where I can shine, where people will remember me? It's just ridiculous that someone will kick anybody. I don't even care if it's another player on the field if you try and kick him in the face. That's unacceptable too, but to attack a defenseless fan, no. I don't care what he's saying. No, I don't care what he's saying. Defenseless is a loose term, but I mean, so I agree with you. So he's he's what, in his mid-30s at this point? The guy has been a professional player for at least 15 years, if not longer. Like, I could see a young player sort of getting caught up in the moment, but what is going on in his head that, that brought this about? I don't know. Sir Alex obviously didn't have control over his players, so that must be what it is. <laughs> no other explanation. No other explanation. <laughs> Moving things all along, but sticking in Manchester, but going over to the blue side of Manchester. Matt, you brought this up when we were texting this week, and it was something that I had never realized, but Sergio Aguero has never been voted into the Pro Footballers Association Team of the Year in England. He is Manchester City's all-time leading scorer and is arguably a top five player in the world, top five striker, I should say, in the world. Uh, Christian, you know, what? what is your take on Aguero never being in the PFA Team of the Year? <laughs> what the hell is going on with the PFA that he is not in the Team of the Year? I think that is absolutely ridiculous. For every single year since he's been there, He's easily been in the top five players in the league. And I think it's even higher than that. He has the highest goal scoring ratio per game in the league, I think, since he joined. Correct? Other than maybe Harry Kane now. Are you giving hints? Maybe Harry Kane. Are you giving no. hints? Uh, yeah, what the so trivia not question this year, is? Not this year. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but are he, you really does, <laughs> he really does have such a high level of quality and a high goal scoring ratio that it's shocking. The only reason I can think that he isn't in there is because of players like. Van Persie, Suarez, Ibrahimovic, Diego Costa, now Harry Kane and Lukaku. Those players are all very solid, but I think Aguero, other than maybe one or two of them, is a better player all around. And it's just unbelievable that he's not getting in there. Agreed. Matt, thoughts on this? Yeah, um, I think it's ridiculous. I mean, we were texting about it and I gave my two cents then, but the fact that it, people say his injuries, he only had like one of those seasons, I think only in one of them, he had less than 30 appearances. So like, he is injured, but I mean, he does get 30 games is enough to make a team of the year, a PFA team of the year, I think. So I think it's just a bit ridiculous. Um, I think this entire time, a top five striker in the world um, over since, what, 2011, I think he came? I believe so. Um, yeah, so I think these last five, six years, he's been a top five striker. Um, definitely like an undisputed top 10 striker in the world at uh, over these last couple of years. So I think... It's just a bit ridiculous. And oh, how does that voting work? Can we discuss that? I think it's the P- players and coaches, right? Yeah, that's what. Yeah. Yep, I believe. Hmm. Hmm. So I guess <laughs> the players don't like him. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it, it, and now, so I don't have anything additional to really add beyond what you guys are saying. I just now, I don't know if he ever will get in the team of the year with the level of talent that that's into the league and especially the way Manchester City is trending with Jesus getting kind of more of the first team minutes and Aguero fainting and having all kinds of freak injuries. Like, I don't know if, uh, if he will ever, which is crazy to me because I, I agree with you guys. I think City are so good this year that both of them could technically get in. They, they, I mean, Harry Kane looks incredibly informed too, so I don't know if you're really going to be able to replace him. But I, I think Aguero looks absolutely incredible when he is playing this year. And other than this past week when he fainted for Argentina, and I still don't really know what happened there. I, maybe you guys know. Uh, he is such a quality player that I easily could see him slipping in there. And with how good city are going forward, they might have four players in the attack of that PFA team of the year. Yep. He could easily slip it in. So let's <laughs> go to Messi 
and talk about him when he was in, I want to say Russia, he was somewhere internationally and uh, came across a another Argentine player who he had met previously and didn't end up recognizing the guy. So the guy asked for a picture and only when the, the guy posted it on social media did Lionel Messi understand that, oh, he was a former, or not a former, he was a fellow Argentine player. Messi apologized immediately once he realized it. Matt, do you have any thoughts on this situation? Do you excuse Messi? Is there anything more to this? You know, what were your thoughts on reading this? Yeah, I excuse. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this guy uh, wasn't on this current roster for Argentina, right? He was yeah. just visiting the guys in the hotel. Exactly. He's like, I think, like a 21 like, year old player. He's a fairly young yeah. player. Yeah, he's very, like wearing a hat too, and like all sweats. Like it's not like he was a noticeable guy i would say uh from when i saw the picture he's just some guy you know you wouldn't know um but uh yeah so i, I would excuse messi i mean he's he, everybody knows messi like everybody wants to get a picture with messi i'm sure like when he just hears kind of get a picture like he kind of just like tunes out and he's like all right picture time so like i, I excuse him for it um and it's nice that he apologized and i find it weird that like everybody knows about this like how did this story like get out that was like oh messi doesn't know me <laughs> and now he does <laughs> I don't know. well i think since messi issued a public apology i think that's how it got out yeah i know but like how would he know i don't like, know you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how, how would how would messi know that the player didn't know is that what you're saying? yeah or just like anybody knew that messi didn't it was just a picture well, yeah, Messi came out afterwards and said something. So if Messi didn't say anything, it wouldn't have gotten out. So that, that's how I think everybody knows. Messi came out and said, hey, I apologize. I didn't recognize you. Yeah. Well, I find it an interesting story that it's just like, yeah, I don't know how this got out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Christian, your take on this whole situation. So when you were working, did you know everyone in your office building? No, not everyone in okay, the office so building how big the soccer community is and how many Argentina players there are, can you really expect him to recognize every single one that he's met over the years? That, that's just unfair to expect. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know most of the people who work on my floor. Like, it's, it's not really fair that's to expect you're somebody boy. to... That's you're true. always on vacation, you know? I seem like I never work anymore, so that's yeah. a good point. Um, <laughs> we, we can't really hold Messi responsible for that, and good on him for taking credibility for it immediately and saying oh my god i'm so sorry i didn't recognize you but taking credibility for yeah. it i don't think that's the right I, way accountability accountability that's the word accountability 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 buddy. Bill of buddies. <laughs> <laughs> well, i can't speak. Buddies. yes there we go um, right. yeah he's yeah he's he's who he is and he, when you're a big star like that everyone's gonna know who you are and you're not gonna recognize everyone so it's not really that big of a deal and if he had said nothing no one would ever have thought about this, but good on him for saying something and apologizing for that he, for that young man he is, who could be the next Messi. He is who he is. True, true. <laughs> All right, let's keep this thing moving along. Italy did not qualify for the World Cup. Sweden ended up knocking them out. They they had a very like almost eerily similar situation to the U.S. They have a bunch of old guys, and the young players basically weren't breaking through. Ultimately, didn't qualify. You know. Christian, what was your take on Italy not qualifying? Also, Sweden qualified over them. Does Ibra come out of retirement for Sweden? So both those questions real quick. Hmm. Okay. Uh, it's a travesty that since the first time since 1958, Italy will not be in the World Cup. And I saw a Jürgen Löw, the cap the, uh, not captain, the coach of Germany, said that it's an embar not an embarrassment. He said that it is a like a negative sign for the world cup because Italy are such a prominent figure that it's really going to harm the overall spectacle of it. But I, I don't know. Italy haven't always been my favorite team to watch. They've been more of a defensive powerhouse than an attacking. Although over the past couple of years, they've really developed a lot of attacking quality players. I just feel though a lot of those young attacking players aren't being given the chance that they deserve. And players like De Rossi, who is still a solid player, still is the starter in that midfield role and locking it down. I don't know if he... Mm. He really, wasn't He wasn't during this this time. But. Not during this past time? Yeah, okay, but yeah. up until this point, at least, he has been. Yeah. And he's a player who's been there since they won the World Cup, and that was... Oh, six. 11 years ago? Almost 12 years? Yeah. It's going to be 12 years ago this year, and I, I just think that they needed a shift in generation. But to answer your Eber question, I think he will come out of retirement. 
I saw the Sweden coach was saying that mm-hmm. why is all this comp- comp- the conversation about Ibra, like all these players just did it. But if Ibra says, I want to be there, that coach would be ridiculous to not take him. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Matt, uh, Matt, what were your takes on Italy not qualifying and then is Zebra coming out of retirement for Sweden? Sweden? Yeah, so I'm actually fine with Italy not qualifying with, with the current team they have. Obviously, they're a huge soccer power uh, in the world over the entire history of soccer. Um, yeah, so, I mean, they should be in the tournament technically just by reputation, but with their current team, like, I was just so underwhelmed by them. Um their depth was all old. Um, their starters weren't necessarily impressive. Um, I think they have a good future coming up in, a, in maybe a couple of years. But Sweden, they've been killing the Euro uh, youth tournaments and the, you know, just the world youth tournaments, the FIFA youth tournaments with uh, their national team. And they, they, they're going to be good soon. Um, and they might not have like the biggest like household names, but like I've been following the last like couple of years, our U twenty threes, U twenties have been killing it in tournaments. So obviously that was going to translate at some point. So I'm glad they made the World Cup. Oh yeah, and Ibra. Um, I mean, like I, I would be fine with him on the team, but I don't think he would necessarily just walk in and be the starting striker, considering they just qualified for the World Cup without him. And I think they, they – I watch both legs. They play with so much energy now because, I mean, like, Ebro, you just lose a whole person on the field on defense. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, just, you really do. At, at this point in his career, too, uh, he, for me to see him caring too much, even in the World Cup. But you think he'll be on the roster, right? I think, I think he deserves to be on the roster, but like, I don't think he should walk in just saying he's, like, the king of Sweden – I mean, like, he's going to run the team after he didn't help them really qualify. Isn't he the king of Sweden? I think he's self-appointed uh, king. <laughs> I think he's self-appointed king. Yeah, all great points, guys. I don't have much to add. I will say. I... Oh, sorry. You still. Okay. Yeah, just circling I back. I thought you were going to move on. Mm. No, nope, nope. <clears throat> circling back. <laughs> circling back to what Matt was pointing out with Italy. Again, just tying it back to the U.S. I think it's, again, eerily similar with how Italy's just older generation is being phased out and they just simply weren't good enough. And they have a ton of youth players coming up that just weren't ready, or at least the coach didn't give them an opportunity. And again, just tying it back to the U.S., it was almost an eerily similar situation to them. Christian, something else you wanted to add? Yeah, I just want to say I'm really sad for her. Gigi Buffon, I think this was his swan song and it was going to be a really, really big deal for him. And you could see it on his face. He was in tears the other day. And it's really, it's really sad to see a legend like that go out the way that he did. Absolutely. Yeah, Gigi is a fantastic player to, to watch and just class act. So uh, sad, sad and stuff. It's sad. Yeah, it's sad that that was his final performance probably for Italy. But it's going to be interesting to see how Donnarumma now takes over for the next 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. All right. Speaking <laughs> of not qualifying for the World Cup, the U.S. is considering, and I'm I'm almost even embarrassed to to talk about this, but the U.S. soccer is considering <laughs> hosting a tournament next, I guess, late spring before the World Cup or during the World Cup, or they're still working out logistics for all the countries that didn't actually qualify for the World Cup. So Netherlands, Chile, Ivory Coast, Italy, U.S. Matt, what is your take on the U.S. actually exploring this and if they were to actually host this? It's the most uh, U.S. thing I've ever heard of. Um, <laughs> you know, I just can't, can't win, just make something else. Um, so, I, I mean, like, in theory, this is actually somewhat of a decent idea, not wasting these months over summer and getting, like, a legit, you know, competition in. But, you know, just the fact that you can't face not qualifying for the World Cup and just making a tournament and making a competitive trophy, I think it's just going to be, like, funny more than anything else uh, from an outside perspective. But it actually might help, you know, the development of the national team to get these competitive matches in. Christian, thoughts on the U.S. considering this? This is an embarrassment. It's like the Cleveland Browns making a tournament during the playoffs. It's, this is ridiculous. That's a great comparison. It's, <laughs> it's, it's to play like ridiculous. college teams. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good competition for them to see how they can match up. Uh, I just think that it's, it, it is an embarrassment. Uh, I, am I going to watch it if it happens? Yeah, I will. Absolutely. But I, I think it's ridiculous that they're considering doing that. There are a lot of quality teams out there that didn't make the World Cup, but there's no business for this, and it's not going to compete with the World Cup, even though it's in the, if, even if the U.S. have it, it's not going to compete. 
Yeah, and I don't think the U.S. is under any illusions that it would compete with the World Cup, but to play devil's advocate, the UEFA Nations League is starting in September, and this is the last time basically the U.S. would have an opportunity to play a lot of these countries. And so, you know, there's that sort of angle. Um, so I, I don't know what your your take is on, on that particular angle, but then there's the other angle of the European season is a long, grueling process, and it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to have some time off to sort of regroup, rest, and Christian Pulisic has played a ton of minutes, and it wouldn't be a bad thing to give him some time off, and there's a lot of other players that are in a similar situation. So it would almost be better for the U.S. to just regroup, not go through this, and just kind of really refresh. So that's kind of my actual take on it. But I just wanted to, to throw out the devil's advocate piece of the Nations League is starting and the U.S. is maybe the last time they get to scrimmage them outside of a World Cup. Yeah, I agree. That, that, that is a good test, but I don't know if it needs to be a tournament. They could just play one-off scrimmages or, or friendlies. I don't know if it's necessary that we do that. Okay. Matt, anything else you wanted to add? No, you guys got it. Okay, cool. Guys, anything, <laughs> any other topics or things you want to add to the podcast before we start to wrap up? Christian? Mm, no, I do not believe so. Cool. A couple things I wanted to mention. Uh, congrats to Robbie Rogers, Justin Mapp, and Chris Rolfe, uh, three MLS players who had a great career. They all just retired. Uh, at least Rolf and Rogers due to injury, so it's always unfortunate with that. Map at this point is just old, but he's a former Union player. I always liked his his game, and he's kind of petered out over the last couple of years. But again, great MLS career. Also wanted to give a shout out. We'll link to it in the show notes. Christian Pulisic wrote a great article, or kind of. I don't know if he actually wrote it or somebody else wrote it, but he was very involved in a letter to the Players Tribune about American soccer and sort of development and all of that. So that was a great, great read. We'll link to it in our show notes. Christian, you want to recap our oh, another? Sorry, I just remembered another point. That was yep. What's up? <laughs> I sent this guys. I sent this to you guys. Uh, I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. The Neymar for Bale and Cruz to PSG. I think that is the most ridiculous transfer yeah, I don't rumor that I see. That is absurd. I don't really give too much credence to a lot of the rumors, especially this time of year. So that's just that was just a funny one that I thought was needing bringing up. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks for bringing it up. Um, you're welcome. All right. So the trivia question this week it was which three players had the best goals to game ratio in 2017? Matt, do you want to give your guesses first? Or you want me to go first? I can go first. Um, so I think Messi's going to be one of the three. I don't have to go in order, right? Nope. No. Okay, so I think Messi's going to be one of those three. Harry Kane's going to be up there. And I'm trying to think of the other leagues. I – oh. Uh, uh, Cavani? All right, How Dave. So I, the first two were the exact same two, and I was struggling with picking a third per person as well. I'm going to say just Gonzalo Higuain. Just, I, I don't, oh, actually, damn it. That's a good one. Yeah, I don't actually believe it, but I'm just, just to say somebody different. Uh, well, Gonzalo Higuain didn't even make the top 20. So yeah, I'll tell you I, didn't, much. yeah <laughs> I didn't think, I didn't think so. So I wasn't confident in that one. Uh, Messi scored the most goals in 2017, but it was not one of the top three ratios. Really? Wow. Yeah. Messi and Ronaldo both were out. Yeah, I knew Ronaldo was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, number one, Dragan Boscovich. Yes, you heard that correct. I don't even he know who that for, is. I think Bangkok FC. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so he was one, but the other two are two are famous players. Okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, number two was Robert Lewandowski from FC oh, Bayern Munich. What was I thinking? <laughs> 47 in 46 games. Yeah. And Harry Kane had 45 in 42 in number yeah. two. Yeah, I should have said Leva. All right. That was, that was a good one other than the first guy. What the hell was the guy's name? Dragan Boscovich. That's a great name. Dragan? He had 40, 41 Drogon. goals and 37 appearances this season. Probably breathe some fire, you know? Hmm. Probably. He's a yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for being here. Uh, listeners, thanks for sticking with us through the podcast and listening. Uh, we will link to all of the stories that we discussed here in our show notes. So check out those. We'll also tweet them out from our Twitter handle, which is at BT Soccer Pod. Our email is bros.talking.soccer at gmail.com. We'll link all of the lads' information in the show notes as well. Follow them on social media. Go check out their podcast. They're awesome, funny guys. 
And uh, everything was brought to you by FanFoot. So go check out our Bumpy Pitch game and uh, join. You could win a $20 gift card. It's just that simple. Christian and Matt, thank you guys for being here. Listeners, thank you again. And we will talk to you next week for our one-year anniversary. Bye. All right, cool. I thought that went really well, and uh, I'm excited to edit it. So it should be good, and uh, it'll be out in a couple hours. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye, YouTubers. Bye.